now. All right. Um, and then share screen. Yeah, so it's important that you repeat all of this and you keep doing it over and over again. So I'm gonna um, uh, let me know if you can see my screen when it talks about, can you all see the screen with all the green on it right now? Good. So section one, introduction, meeting your presenters. It was talking about who all the coaching clients were. If I open up section one, the first thing that it asks you to download is the work, the ramp digital workbook. It's a very long uh, book and it's got all of the classes and the weeks in there. And it's, it's uh, definitely very thorough, okay? Um, now, if we go back and we go to uh, the second video in week one, it's finding your big why. It says to be successful, you need a clear vision of what you decide on real estate. Your big why is the motivating factor. Remember that your big why is not money, okay? And it's not typically paying off your house or that those are little whys. Little whys are things that keep you going along the way. Uh, there was no attachments in this week, but basically you're, you're, um, you're learning about, um, oh, why did this, why did that go that way? Hold on, let me go back a bit. I'll go back here. Yeah, so you're learning, when you're looking at a big why, it's something that will kind of get you out of bed on a really bad day. Uh, so for instance, it took me till I was 57 years old to kind of figure out what that really truly was. Like what was what got me out of bed on a bad day? Like it used to be getting to play basketball got me out of bed on a bad day. I mean, I still get pretty excited about getting up at four in the morning to go play basketball on the days that I play. Um, however, you know, it wasn't really my big why, but what I realized is I would get out of bed under any circumstances to spend more quality time with my wife and my sons. And so that was what became my big why is time with those three people that I love more than life itself. Now I have brothers, a brother and sisters that I want to spend time with also, but those are sort of sub wise, right? Like to be able to be free enough to to spend that time that I want with them. So I want you to be thinking about what those are. Um, and then of course the next, and, and, and by the way, if, if you don't have one, then maybe being on a journey to find out what it is. Uh, on the last, on the free Friday coaching call, I talked about a girl named Sherry Mason in Tennessee. And uh, the reason it was such a big deal to me that Sherry came back as she was dwindling away from selling real estate. And my job isn't to tell her to sell real estate if she doesn't want to, because she's financially set for life. She's got rental properties. She's got residual income coming in. Uh, she owns everything she owns outright, like all these different things that she has set herself up for success, but she wasn't really inspired about life anymore since she stopped selling real estate. So I said, well, what if you found a different reason to push you to selling more real estate. So she figured out this nonprofit and said, that's the reason why I'm going to sell more real estate, right? So that she, and now she's more inspired. She wakes up excited. She likes coaching. She's talking to workman success. So that's the whole idea is that we get caught up in the necessity that I got to sell real estate to make money, but you're selling real estate to make money to pay bills. Now, what happens if you sell a ton of real estate and now all the bills are paid off? Then well, now, why are you still selling real estate? And, and too many people underestimate the power of having something that they're working for, okay? Uh, the third week in there has, look at this, the WSS Mastery Facebook page. So you wanna join that and your daily success habits tracker. What are you doing on a daily basis? Timing every 30 minutes for the day such that you will, um, you know, that you will in those 30 minutes, you will uh, know what you did on those 30 minutes, look back over several days of 30 minute timers and say, where am I wasting time? What am I doing that's effective towards getting me where I want to go? And what am I doing that's not effective? Um, and then, of course, it goes into the business plan. And I'm not going to open all of these because I know that business plan workbook, like the back of my hand, I've taught it 150 times or more. Uh, really, really, really great workbook. And you going through the business plan workbook, no matter what time of the year it is, is vital. Redoing it, doing it again, you know, being so happy with it that you don't do it again, but you start following it. Okay, those are all vital things. So think about what your 
uh, goals are for the rest of this year. Remember, as I said on the Free Friday Coaching Call, that today is day number one of quarter number two. Day number one of quarter number two. No April Fools. Okay. Um, and what, why is that significant? Because it's the beginning of the second quarter and you could have looked at your first quarter and said, wow, that really sucked. I thought it was going to be amazing. Or I could have done so much better than I did. Good, good points. All great points. All great points. Why wouldn't I do better if I started off, uh, for instance, changing my outlook and becoming uh, more of a listing agent in quarter number two than I was, you know, in quarter number one or all these different things, kinds of things you could be doing differently. Um, but that's all going to be figured out in your business plan. So part one of the business plan is the strategic plan. That means seeing the movie trailer and kind of knowing where the journey is going to lead to. So it's starting with the end in mind. Okay. So usually one of the main things on the strategic plan is where do I want to see my business five years from now? And where do I want to see my life five years from now? And then once you've established that, then you work backwards to today that what's, what has to happen. Part two of the business plan is your core values and your mission statement, really big deals. Um, core values are figuring out what are those words that really, really inspire you to work and how you want to work and the people you want to be around. Uh, Crystal, today you were introducing us to new people on the Free Friday Coaching Call. I'd imagine that since these are people you admire and respect, that they have similarities to you in behavior and drive and motivation. And that's why we surround ourselves with those people. So um, you figure out what were those words? I like people who are family-based or that have values on honesty or integrity or whatever those are. Uh, your mission statement, there's five questions in there. There's five questions in the workbook that guide your mission statement. The mission statement of the Rick Chiha real estate team is to improve the lives of all we serve. It's very simple, one sentence, to improve the lives of all we serve. How can we do that, right? So your mission statement has to be a representation of where you're going in your life. Why, what makes you unique? What makes your business unique? What are you really trying to do? And so you can copy mine, use it, who cares? Who's gonna read? The people reading mine are probably not reading yours. So, but you've gotta find one that really lights you up inside so that when you say it, you feel like you're saying it with passion, like an elevator speech. All right. Um, uh, SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Opportunities and threats are things you don't control. Strengths and weaknesses are things you do control. What's an opportunity threat, low inventory, higher interest rates, you know, uh, acts of God. Those are things you don't control, but doing a SWOT analysis is such a reality hit. Okay. One of the things we ask you to do is to give the SWOT analysis to uh, three or uh, five people you know, two in the business, three out of the business and say, please fill out my SWOT for me and help me to see the blind sides of myself that I don't see. And they'll tell you strengths and weaknesses and things like that. Very important part, pillars of income. That's gonna be the four different ways that you create income in the real estate business, open houses, sphere of influence, uh, top 50, uh, whatever it is that you do to create sales in the real estate business. Uh, then um, the goals, goal achievement system, just how, what are your big goals and how are you going to achieve them? And then of course, the, the finances part of your business and your life. So very great stuff in that business plan workbook. And I would encourage you to get in there and be doing that really quickly. That was, that was all in week one. That's a lot. And if you open these up, there's downloads, there's the business plan workbook download, and all of the different forms and pages, um, which are, you know, it's like you've got that, uh, the first thing they gave you was the ramp workbook, and then all of those pages uh, for the business plan workbook also. All right. So that was week one. Now, if we get into week two, the weeks will go a lot faster because there's a lot less videos. But in week two, uh, talked about tracking your leads, and then they give you a lead tracker. So that's something to download. Make sure you download, you keep those in your computer so that you're using them. Um, and then your sphere of influence, how to, the one thing that I would love to, yeah, spend just a little more time on right now is that sphere of influence. Uh, and by the way, guys, I'm talking fast because we have 12 weeks to wrap up. So I want you to be thinking about stopping me and saying, Rick, wait, I want to learn more about this or I need to, I need your, your cl clearing this up for me so that when you leave the call today, that you're willing to go back to this. You all paid your 149. It's yours for the whole year. 
not just for the ramp 12 week call. So go back and be watching the videos and inspiring yourself daily. Look, this is a lonely business that we're in. And by that, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just you with your thoughts. And your thoughts are not polite to you. Believe me, they are not kind. They constantly remind you that you're less than when the fact is you're more than enough. So don't let that stop you. But by, by tracking your leads and then, and then filling out like your sphere of influence, there's a sphere of influence tracker. There's an ABCs of lead management, ABC meaning who's your A's, who's your B's, and who's your C's in your leads. All of these things are designed to help bring organization and less frantic work in your real estate business because you're always going to know when your turn is to call these people and these people and these people. In the ABCs of lead management, it tells you what days of the week and the month to be calling people based on whether they're an A, B, or C. So it's all figured out for you. Now you just slip it into your calendar. Okay. All right. Uh, prospecting. Damn, right? I mean, this is the one that we all hate. This is the one that we hate when you come up with that subject. Or, But so surprising. As much as people hate prospecting, if I put on a lead generation seminar, you'd be surprised how many people go. And what do they hear when they're there? Oh, yeah, I heard that before. Oh, yeah, I was told that before. Yeah, I'm not doing any of that either, right? They just get reminded of all the shit they're not doing. Oh, excuse me, stuff they're not doing, okay? So I saw that grin, Michael Henry. So uh, those are the things that you, uh, that you really want to uh, keep in mind as you look at this. The week two has a lot of really powerful things that if you're using them, they work well. But I really want you to spend more time. Um, a lot of your things, like your top 50, comes out of your sphere of influence. The reason I bring that up is because think about your sphere of influence right now, what you've got. Like if I look, I see you know, a very young Amber compared to a very much older Rick Jiha, right? And everybody else, let's just say they all fall between a very young Amber and Rick. When the, the U.S. government says, if you graduated from high school in the United States, you know 2,000 people by first name. How many of you already have 2,000 people on your database? Well, most people don't. The average in real estate is 250. Why? If you knew 2,000 people when you graduated from high school, where are all of those people? Well, guess what? We forgot we knew them. Simple fact, we forgot we knew them. So you have reminders. What are your reminders? Amber, do you mind if I pick on you for a minute, honey? Okay. How old are you? 32. 32. Okay. So you're younger than my youngest son. So you graduated from high school right around 14 years ago. Okay. Close? Yep. Okay. So you probably graduated 2009? 2008. Hey, okay. So the year after my son, Joey. Um, do you have one or more of your yearbooks? Yes. Good. Do you know what's in your yearbooks right now? People. Hundreds of buyers. The number one age of a first time buyer in the United States right now is between 32 and 36. So you have a yearbook full of buyers. <laughs> now, you might say, like, I was a nerd in high school, Amber. I know it's hard to believe because I'm so cool right now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. Um, <laughs> so I was a nerd, okay? But when, I, when my sons were going through the same high school I was, Amber, and they're your age, I advertised in their yearbook. So the school gave me copies of them. And so if I pull that off my shelf and I open it up and then I have over here on my computer, my database or my sphere of influence, I can be looking at all these kids that went to school with my kids and say, why aren't all these people on my database? They're all potential buyers. But you know what else I see, Amber, that you could see in your yearbook? I, in my mind, see their parents. Right. So yeah. let's say you had 10 really good friends in high school, 10. I think most people have more. I had one and it was my mom. She wasn't in high school with me. So I'm kidding. So you have 10, let's say. Okay, Amber. So I want everybody to use this as your example for yourself, whether it's your kids or yourself or your parents or your grandparents or your aunts or your uncles. You had 10 good friends. Probably you knew their parents right? Perfect time to call them and say, are you in your forever home? 
Now, some of you weren't on the free Friday coach call, but we talked about that is what probably one of the best new scripts and dialogues for getting listings in today's market is you ask people in your forever home and they say no. And you go, oh my gosh, this market we're in is an anomaly. It's an anomaly and it will never happen again. Properties are worth more today than they've ever been worth before. If you're not in your forever home, this is the best time now to sell the home you're in and buy your forever home. So now Amber, you have a script to go, right? Call the parents of all those people you knew. And now you also know that I'm Amber, I'm cool. I'm a real estate agent and I know how to talk to people. I say, hello, how are you? You could do that with all the other people in the yearbook. Just call them up and say, it's me, Amber from high school. We lost touch, my bad, how are you? Right? And right. you might say, Amber, that's going to be the most painful thing I've ever done, Rick. I hate people. All right. Now, let's say you don't hate people, but you're really not big on just randomly talking to people. Sorry, it's your real estate business. You're going to have to fake it till you make it. Okay. You're going to have to go in there and act like you're all excited to see them. Remember that bitch that you hated in high school? You're going to have to call her and be all nice because, you know, you just want her to buy a house from you. But you don't really have to call her because there's so many other people you can call. Make sense? Right. Okay. Uh, in Mike's group right there in the office in Cleveland, um, there's a lot of different ages. Is anybody resonating with what I'm talking to Amber about? Come on, speak up. We all are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so the problem with most of us is we never stopped to build a great sphere of influence. And it's not something you have to stop to do. It's just something you need to put time in your schedule to do a little bit of every week. Now, where do I do my sphere of influence building? I do it in the evening or in the early morning, not in between the day. That's not the time to do that kind of clerical activity. All right. And where does your top 50 come from, which is also in here, your top 50 comes out of that sphere of influence. It's a byproduct of the sphere of influence. The top 50, Amber, are the 50 people most likely to give you one referral a year or more. Who are those people? Well, they have to be special people to be on that list because you're going to do special things for them. So you really want it. That will be in one of these chapters. I'm pretty sure if it's not in, uh, I wonder if it's under, let me look here. It's probably coming up soon then, maybe in week three. Uh, so building your database is remembering all the people you forgot you knew and getting them back in there. Recreating a relationship with them. Okay, my mom, because uh, I'm in my 60s, my mom was born and my dad was born in the 20s. I was born and uh, my mom was born in the 30s and my dad and I was born in the 50s. So they still all used paper address books, right? So I remember when I went to get married the first time that I added all of these people to my wedding list from my mom's scrappy little falling apart address book. All right. So just all of the different people that you can remember, you knew that's who goes on your sphere of influence. And then you set out on a mission to call and speak to every one of them. Thousands, if you can get them. And you go, that would take forever. It's okay. This isn't a business that we got in for a year. You're just going to keep calling them, keeping track and getting them into the uh, fun of being your client in the real estate industry. Got it? Okay, so uh, we'll stop on week two now. I think we covered everything and we'll go back to week three now. All right, week three. Yeah, so week three has the top 50 in us. Let, let the world know you're in real estate. That's standing from the hilltops and screaming that you're in real estate, which is what I was just saying. You're calling everybody in your entire sphere of influence and then you're figuring out who your top 50 is you're going to mentor and shadow other people. Most of you are doing that by being on the free Friday coaching calls. Amber, were you on the free Friday coaching call today? Are you uh, signed up to, you know, the link and everything? I don't think I am. Okay. Or maybe I am. All right. Like well, well, you can go to empirebuilders. <laughs> you can go to empirebuilders.pro under resources and click on the link. It's, it's the hour before this. It's 9 a.m. California time every first and third Fridays. Yeah, congratulations, Crystal, by the way. I didn't know that, that's awesome. Um, all right, uh, so practice make perfect, the LP MAM script. Uh, 
Workman Success Systems, guys, the company you're, when you're signed up for this program at $149 a year, you have access to all their other programs and they have a role play call at 9 a.m. California time, which is noon Eastern time every Thursday, okay? Where you can jump on, listen to one of the top coaches in the country talk about role playing. All right, we're relaunching it again as a brand new system starting May 12th. Uh, so please use the resources that you get for free with your 149 a year with Workman Success Systems. In week two, remember I showed you that they've got the Workman Success Mastery Facebook page that you get to go and be on and pay attention to all they're doing. It's literally, guys, people are paying thousands of dollars a month to get all this stuff free. You get it for 149 a year, okay? The average coaching client at Workman Success Systems is paying $1,500 per month, the average coaching client, okay? So you guys are getting all that stuff for $149 a year. So just jump in. Okay. Um, and then uh, practice makes perfect. So the LP MAM script, there's a lot of scripts and dialogues they'll do for you that, that you'll really um, be able to put your, you know, sink your teeth into. Week four uh, now, this is starting to do more of the common lead generation stuff, open houses, lead generation in general. Uh, look what it says on this one. It says lead generation with little or no cost to you. So that's not saying buying Zillow leads or buying realtor.com leads. It's actually how to do that. It's door knocking, prospecting, uh, calling, walking, all kinds of different things that you can do. Uh, week eight, I mean, session 18 is more about staying job uh, safe, you know, because of not you know, not going out along your own to show property when you don't know the person you're meeting, things like that. Now, accountability on uh, the, uh, the fourth session for week four is a really big deal. How do you stay accountable? You get an accountability partner, somebody that's willing to be non-judgmental, but hold you accountable and hold you capable of what you said you would do. All right. Now let's go back to week five. see week five all right so this is more about the home showing what to do when you have a buyer i'm going to ask you guys to review these like okay so melissa was uh is she on i don't know i, I can't see because i have this but so missy was showing property this morning you'd be surprised if you just review some of this because there's videos of people showing oh hi missy welcome to, back to the office Enjoy your fajitas. Don't think about me starving over here talking to you. Um, but if you think about the fact that we are so on automatic when we show a home, you know, the, you know what the public, not the real estate agent public, but the, real, the consumer public joke about us when we say, yes, this is the kitchen. Well, duh, there's a sink and a stove. Yes, I know we're in the kitchen. Um, but there's some really good videos in the working with buyer this, this week this week of the of um, of ramp with top top agents showing you how to how to show a home properly and you say well you know you show the home based on how the buyer wants to see it well actually there's some important things you could learn to say is this a home you'd buy if this weren't a home you'd buy what would need to be different for it to be a home you'd buy like things that you can ask so that you're narrowing down what the buyer really wants to have for themselves these are all things that you can learn by watching some of these, okay? Um, and then, of course, knowing your way around a contract. That's more, since everybody here is EXP, your state brokers in each state will show you, you know, how to um, negotiate around your state brokerage, et cetera. Remember that you want to open and watch every single video because when you open it to watch it on the right, it tells you if there's a download. And those downloads are vital for your success, okay? Week six. Look, helping your buyer establish the offer price, sorting your priorities. This is look at balance your busy day by learning to sort your daily tasks. Judge between urgency and importance and get the right things done. There's a couple of downloads of forms in here, uh, the Eisenhower form and a couple of others that help you determine what's urgent versus what's important. Okay, what to delegate and what to do. Write these five do's down, uh, five D's down. Um, you have do, delegate, delay. Um, do, delegate, delay, um, and destroy. I think there's four of them, like throw it away, do it, or delegate it. Um, 
and there were wait, well, there was a there was a yeah, it was delay. Do it later. Do it now. Do it later. Delegate it to someone else, or it doesn't need to be done. So those were the D's. Yeah. Uh, then there's the ten commitments of prospecting and converting leads. This is a really good one, you guys. I'd really love for you guys to go back and review that again. The ten commitments of prospecting and converting leads. Okay. All right, that's week six. All right, week seven. This is more about sellers, improving client communication, establishing sales price, three types of market, uh, have a listing, working with sellers. This is a really big seller week. Now, if you remember on the call that we had that week, we talked about different things that might be good ways to communicate with sellers. Remember, uh, you know, that you want to be amazing at listings. We're talking about that. We talked about it on a free Friday coaching call. It's important that you become a great listing agent because the amount of time that you spend doing listings versus the amount of time you spend with buyers. So remember that this week is really big on that too. So, all right. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Week eight. Uh, negotiation, understanding the financial side of a transaction, a uh, little more about the loans and what happens after you have a property under contract. Remember that Workman Success Systems coaches people all over the U.S. and Canada, so they're not going to know your state laws and the different things that are different about doing it in one state over the other. So basically, this is where you really want to lean on your mentor and your guides so that they say, this is how we do things when things get under contract here. I'm a big advocate of everybody, everybody, no matter how new or how experienced using a transaction coordinator to help you through the myriad of paperwork that's required by your broker or by your state. Okay. So very important part of doing that. Week nine. Uh, this is like, don't be furniture at the closing. Now the state of California is a little different on closings than it is anywhere else, but don't be sitting around doing nothing at a closing. It says, uh, you know, know your role leading up to the closing table and at the closing table itself to provide exceptional care for your client until the very end. Um, and that is very, very, very important. Um, the closing gift, whether you're representing a buyer or seller, can be very important. I think I shared with you guys before when we were doing week seven, uh, this uh, was that, um, that when, we, when we close any buyer, any seller, they get fruit every month, Harry and David fruit for every month for a year. Now think about that. How powerful is that? People go, well, Rick, that's 262 bucks and that's a big chunk of my commission. Well, if you get one more commission from one, each client, not only does that $262 become not important at all, uh, you've done the job of paying back to your client. And I get text messages every single month from tons and tons of people with a picture of the fruit they just got and a big old thank you. So it's a way to constantly, for every month, for a year, they're never going to forget you. Never. Okay. So that's a big deal. Marketing yourself, knowing what are, there's got to be a lot of consistency. Everybody on my database, is it's two emails a month, two emails every month. Okay. And then if they're in the top 50, they get more than that. So it's important to start establishing. Um, uh, thank you, MC. Uh, but it's important. That was my assistant Gina's idea. But it's important to start establishing regular and consistent communication with everybody on your database so that they all know when they think of real estate, they should be thinking of you. Okay. Understanding social media is not, not my expertise. My assistant takes care of that but it's important that it's involved. Don't have to be an expert. You just have to know one. That's the resources part of your job, knowing the resources that give the client what they want. All right. Okay, week 10. Creating amazing client experiences. When we list a house, we have about 61 different things that we do from the minute I meet the seller till the minute they receive their closing. Oh, excuse me, closing check if they're not renting back. So you want to do whatever you can to make the experience with you a unique and amazing experience. Uh, and then there's all kinds of information here about overcoming objections, 
uh, how to win a competitive buyer seller market without discounting your fee. Lots of great stuff in this one. The four laws of your database. You really want to review that. That's a really good one. Um, let me just see if we can see if they have a download here. No, they didn't have a download. Follow these four laws to build, grow, nurture, and maintain. There's your four laws. Build, grow, nurture, and maintain your database. All right. Okay. And then week 11, this is using your C CRM. Now your CRM, you guys are all EXP and not everybody uses KV Core, but KV Core is a really powerful one. Um, there's a gentleman named Shannon Pyatt. Uh, he's just another real estate agent at eXp, but he's really good. And he has programs from $97 and up on how to help you make KV Core be your best buddy. Uh, most of us don't know how. Most We have access to all the free videos on how to learn it from start to finish, but very few of us will master the product KV Core. And there are people all over the world talking about what an amazing product KV Core is. And I was using it, not intel intelligently, but using it even before I came to eXp. So it's really um, uh, a really, really important part. Now, this one has a lot of stuff that you can use uh, in terms of keeping track of your past clients and following up after the transaction and even using it as new ways to find business. All right, last but not least, week 12. This is always going to be about the financing end. Um, uh, session 56 or the first week uh, by sticking to a budget, you want to stick to a budget, but a lot of times people don't have a budget, so they don't have a budget to stick to. And that's very important. One of the books that I highly recommend, and I'd say all of you write this down and go buy the book, but I'll bet you Mike has one, uh, is The Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller. Why is that book so good? Because it tells you what percentages of your income should be spent on this, that, or the other. And those percentages may sometimes vary based on how big your production is currently. Um, but you always want to be running your business at a 50-50 margin or better. Okay. Now, I'm running a large team where we do a lot of production. We have a lot of expenses and my margins are 40% profitability, which is letter for letter exactly what it says in the millionaire real estate agent book so i feel good about that however we can continuously battle to keep expenses down and revenue up all right um so a lot of good information in ramp 12 which is the review week and the says like on the second session this week about using dsh your daily success habits forms and your accountability all right let's stop right there that's the 12 weeks uh, let's talk, guys. What do you got that you could use some help with? Raise your hand, unmute yourself, and speak. You don't. No, you don't even need to raise your hand. There's not enough of us to interrupt. So, all right. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller. Okay. All right. So you guys are all good. Everybody's ready to take on the world without. The ramp week's coming up. You're going to say, look, I got a whole hour back in my week at 10 a.m. California time on each Friday. Good. And do something with it. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, guys. Um, I want to see more productivity. And it's not up to me. At the end of the day, it's up to you. Uh, what I love is this. Uh, we will be making announcements about our launch of the next time we're launching ramp. I would love it if you would each find one person that you know that's in the organization that hasn't been through the 12 weeks and encourage them to sign up for the next launch. Okay, I'd really, really appreciate that. Because we really, we don't get anything for this. We just want to see productivity be prevalent in our organization. And we can only do that with you helping to spread the word. All right? Okay, this you're welcome. This has been amazing, Rick. Thank you so much. No, you're so welcome, MC. Thank you guys for being on. Um, and I appreciate all of you guys' commitment to yourselves and your success. Crystal, you and your hubby are my two of my new favorites. So you guys come on anytime <laughs> you want. So we'll see Aww. you guys. Yeah. So let Yay. us know. Uh, and we'll, we'll make plenty of announcements, guys, uh, through our communication process and your leadership. 
about this and uh, about when it's coming up again, but it will be in May for sure. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. You guys all be good. Happy weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks for me. Me. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye.